In a very first story, the managing director of the Tama Oil Refinery at Sante Berko has resigned. The Tour MD's name has come up in bribery allegations involving former government officials and members of parliament between 2015 and 2016 in the award of a contract to a Turkish firm. Ms. Sante Berko has ever denied bribing any of the people mentioned. In a signed statement from the presidency, the director of communications, Eugene Ahing, stated, the president of the Republic, Nana Adudankwa Kufado, has on Wednesday, April 15, 2020, received the resignation from office of Mr. Santibeko as managing director of the Tama Oil Refinery. This was after he submitted his resignation letter dated April 15, 2020, to the president. President Kufado has accepted Mr. Santibeko's resignation and duly notified the board of directors of TOR of this development. The president wished him well in his future endeavors. Minority Chief Whip in Parliament Mutaka Mubarak has meanwhile denied claims in a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission document that MPs were bribed to facilitate a power deal for AXA Energy. Mr. Mubarak, who was a member of the Energy Committee of Parliament in 2015 that first approved the deal, says not a dime was paid to anybody. He tells Joy News calls for a parliamentary probe is in the right direction, but says that will be a difficult task to undertake because of Asante Beko's denial. No, definitely. No member of parliament in this house will hear such a story and not get worried. What is relieving is that the gentleman himself I've heard is repeatedly said that I have not bribed any parliamentarian. You know the things that happen in our country. Sometimes things happen, like judges will tell you. Someone goes to see the, the clerk at his office, and then it's assumed that the judge has been seen. You being a, a reporter from parliament, someone comes to see you, and he assumes that he has seen your editor. You know, those things, those, those things happen. So for me, the big relief is that the gentleman is saying that, no, I have not bribed parliament. So, but there's cause for worry. We need to begin to improve the way we do things. Because especially, I mean, you see a number of times, the way some of us keep uh, raising concern, even when we're in government, you come, you want to stand down all the orders and do it. Oh, 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 we have deadline. No, we should begin doing, insisting. If you want it early, come early. Because this ration, all of it give credence to this kind of situation. Because if the thing comes and you go to look at the hands and, oh, a lot of the orders were stood down to do it under a kind of certificate of agency. What was urgent? Why not take your time to do more scrutiny? Ask other people who relevant. I mean, I'm a member of parliament. I cannot assume to be an expert in everything. So if something comes and I say, oh, it's about media reporting. Oh, Opoku Gako comes to mind. I should have time to be able to discuss with you, show it to you, look at it, make an advice to help me make an informed decision. But when you come and you are rushing everything through, I will not get the time to consult Opoku Gapo or consult any expert. That is a worry. So I think that we as a house need to re look at the way our process is. Admittedly, all of us try to abuse it. When I say all of us, I mean government after government. I've been in this house since President Kufu. And you always see it, last days. I mean, you've been reporting now. You see it, last days then, they keep packing. Remember the last meeting, before the last, last but one, before the Christmas? You just be at 11 p.m., they lay something, in 20 minutes a day, the account will report. And this is almost $1 billion. That's a political thing, you remember? So these are worrying. So I believe that as a house, one, we need to quickly set up the scrutiny office. I mean, this is long overdue. Because the scrutiny office, what it does is that it serves as a, as a filter for the house. So when you bring business, it is sent there, they will give all the advice. Then parliamentarians now use this expert advice to act. That will allow the things to go through the normal process. But when we all come and the ministers just come and they oh, this thing, then if we don't get it by next week, then the deadline, and then we, we just succumb to their pressure and we rush it through. Obviously, when story like this break up, why wouldn't people believe it that, oh, Joining us on Skype right now is Benjamin Bwachi. He's the Executive Director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bwachi, for making time to speak with us. Now, you've been following this uh, conversation for a while now. Now, Mr. Santibeko has resigned. Is that enough? Um, um, 
think the direction uh, we were expecting that to happen. Uh, to actually engage. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, I can hear, though uh, quite faint, but please, uh, speaker. Right. Okay. okay. So I think it's in the right direction because you need time uh, to exhaust the court processes and giving the state of talk. Uh, the country cannot afford an absent, uh, absent absentee leader in that uh, uh, organization. And therefore, for me, that is the right direction. And uh, we can look into the future to see how Ghana can begin to re-examine the whole package around the deal and see how we can, if possible, get value uh, for Ghana. Now, you just heard uh, Mr. Muntaka Mubarak speak about it, and he's indicating that if the man who's said to have paid the bribe says, I didn't pay any bribes, then it makes it a, a, a it makes it really difficult for whoever is going to investigate to embark on such a task. Absolutely. I mean, it makes it much more difficult, but it doesn't mean that you, we don't need to invest, investigate. And as I've said on your other platforms, the investigation can be at various levels. Civil society um, can do their own work, uh, gathering more evidence. The media, I'm sure some of you will be interested in digging deeper. and. Ghana's security agencies may also be interested in uh, liaising with Security and Exchange Commission in the U.S. Uh, to actually ask what evidence they have, uh, you know, that collaborate the claims. In, uh, you know, so this is just the beginning. Sure, as the case evolves, all of us will be apprised with uh, what necessary steps we can take. Uh, it makes it difficult for you to just hook on to. Um, the testimony of Mr. Beckham at this point because he has denied it. But we need to gather more leads. We need to collaborate more uh, to see how we could uh, bring this case to finality. Now, Mr. Mubarak also brought up the issue of uh, the, these bills being rushed through Parliament. Is this do you agree with him that's one of the issues that can encourage uh, corruption or doesn't enable them to do enough due diligence on these uh, bills? I think it's not an excuse. Parliament, you know, operates with its own rules. Parliament is an organ of state, independent, supposed to be independent of the executive. So to say that the executive is giving you pressure to do your job is not an excuse. We vote for the president differently, and we vote for parliamentarians differently. And the essence, that ex an extra expenditure at the polls is to ensure that we can create separate organs of state that can check each other. And I think if they have, you know, reneged on their duty, then they have to go back and re-examine that and begin to be more effective and biting uh, to ensure that they can protect the interests of the state, for which reason we have elected them. And over the years, we have had a cost, cost to really critique Parliament on how they approve some of these deals, the rush uh, that you know they take deals through, and you know, on many occasions they have suspended you know their own orders to allow deals to go through. So if you suspend uh, Parliament standing orders uh, to pass the deal quickly, you cannot go back to blame the executive. You have to blame yourself. All right, thank you very much, uh, Benjamin Boache. Benjamin Boache is executive director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy. You're watching Joy News Prime.